In this video, I'm going to show you how to plumb a pressure washing truck, rig, trailer, basically how to plumb it. So, with that said, I may try to do a diagram too, so that way if a diagram works better for you, I'll put it in the link below so you'll be able to see how to um, kind of what size, all that great stuff. So with that being said, let's get pressure washing routing of the plumbing. All right, so on this rig here, we have a hydro tech um, five and a half gallon. On all our other trucks, we actually have eight gallons a minute. So it is, um, I'll show you the only difference really on the five gallon versus the eight gallon will be our intake line here. So with that being said, I know I've done some other videos of how to plumb or, you know, make sure you're set up. So I'm not going to worry about that. So with that being said, the first thing I'm going to start with is we're going to start from basically the house, whatever you're hooking up to, to feed water into your pressure washing rig. First thing we use is we use flex gorilla hose, three quarter inch, and I got 150 feet on here. Um, 150 feet hits us at every house we need. This is great hose. It's light. It's flexible. It, um, it's not like that big heavy rubber stuff and uh, drive you nuts, that kind of stuff. But it works great. It's easy, light. Um, you can tell if it's flowing or not. So from there, we actually, I do use the super swivel through this. Um, it don't have a lot of pressure, so I don't have a problem. Um, on this one, I use um, three quarter inch tubing to go over to my tank, but on my eight gallon, I do use an inch hose. And this hose actually runs from the reel and it goes over into my water tank. You can actually see, let me go over there. It's this line right here that's coming from the, the reel and it goes into a bulkhead fitting which goes onto a Hudson valve into the tank and that way it don't overflow the tank. So once it's from the Hudson valve, through another bulkhead fitting at the bottom of the tank and I tee it out. I tee it off on all my units. I go one side for an eye washer and then the other side comes up here for the tank. Now with this being a five and a half gallon minute I use a three quarter inch um, hose. Now if this was a eight gallon a minute I use a one inch hose to feed my pump. So from the pump it does its little thing up in the pump and then it comes up here to the unloader valve. And now this is being hot water. Normally you could come right there and do that. But this being hot water, it actually comes out over there out of the hot water. This is my high pressure. But while I'm here, on the back side of the unloader, we have a low pressure hose that runs in and dumps into the tank. This is the bypass hose. We use this hose so our unit does not get too hot. Um, some of the bypass hoses will actually come here and go right over. You wanna take that out and add a bypass hose. Um, if you leave the bypass hose there and don't run it into a tank, it will overheat. Um, I got a buddy uh, down in the Lexington area. He actually didn't do a buffer tank on a five gallon tank. And what he did to make sure it didn't overheat is he takes that line he made it about 10 feet long and just sets it on the ground in the gutter of the watt. And whenever it's running, it's just flowing there. And then when he pulls the trigger, it comes back on for pressure. But anyway, I'm not worried about that. So our pressure line comes out of our tank and it comes back, comes underneath here and it comes to my downstream injector. And my downstream injector, I use it right here and then I got another bulkhead fitting. I'll put it in there. And instead of going up into the sw super swivel, I've done several videos on this, but I'm gonna tell you why I don't use a super swivel video here. Um, they go bad, they cause our solenoids to go bad. And I was changing them out with having four trucks. We're changing them out every month. 
with at least one a month and that gets old at $60 a piece and $25 a piece it gets old so with that being said our pressure line comes right here I do try to use um, two wire coming across there and it comes here and then when you take your pressure washer hose and you go to your house you pick how much um, we keep 200 feet on here and that way when we get to the house um, and where we need to be at we can disconnect it whether it's at the reel or at 150 feet which most of the time it's 150 feet all right the next thing we do is I'm gonna show it to you because this is part of plumbing we love plumbing I'm gonna walk back over here and so we have another that orange hose right there it goes into a tube that goes all the way to the bottom of the tank through that bulkhead fitting from that tube we come over here to this little 12 volt pump and with this pump we pump our water out of there and it goes up into this deionized tank and that's how we get deionized water comes out of there and runs over to our reel here of the um, hose it's nice and flexible hose um, we do use the swivel here because it's not very high pressure so we don't have no issues with that um, the only other thing is the roof pump and it's not I don't have a roof pump on this truck but with that being said I will do another video about a roof pump and how to plumb a roof pump and maybe wire it up to the whole nine yards so it's all in one video so I hope that helps you out um, if, and I will do a diagram so that way you'll be able to see um, what you might need. Um, so I hope that helps you out. Um, please, please, please subscribe to my channel. I need 200 to get to 5,000 to get to 10,000. Remember my goals. Help me with my goals, please. Um, if you, all the list of stuff you need will be down in the bottom. Um, I'm affiliate. I don't make money off of you. They pay me to say that. So I make a little bit. It's enough to buy beer or buy kids diapers. Kids are expensive and that's what I use it for. I got two of them. So one's in soccer and one's into everything. So hope that helps you out and have a great day.